Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. We got a fun one for you today. We got a little floating title here. If you want to get people's eyeballs on a title, this is going to do it for you. As you can see, that fl title's floating up and down. I've got it doing it over a little five second period. Obviously, you can speed it up and slow it down to your heart's content. Really easy to do. Once you've done it once, of course, you can apply that to anything else. We've got to apply to an actual row there. And like I say, that's going to get your attention pretty quickly. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Once enabled, let's roll down to where we want to work. There's our little title right there. If I look at this on the back end, I've got a row with three columns in it there. My title's in the middle row, but I've actually got a little code module over here. So let's delete this row and we'll start again. Okay, well let's add another row. Now if you want to use a whole row, that's fine. You can put your code module somewhere else or you can actually put the code in the additional CSS. I'll cover that in a moment. So I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before. I'll put a row with three columns in it. Not going to put anything in the left column then. Going to go to the middle column. And let's put a title in there. Going to go down and use a heading module for this. Put what you want it to stay in there, obviously. Not going to give it a background. Now there's no, no link here. If you wanted to link yours title you could use a blurb module or a call to action module and just delete that's a call to action module there just delete the content don't have a button you can link that anywhere and that's a blurb module there just take the icon away and the content you can put a link in there i'm not going to have a link on mine today so that heading module is going to work fine design wise well let's go straight to it i'm going to hit the little paintbrush that'll take me straight to it it's a heading one i don't want it as a heading one because it's not main page title i'm going to make it a heading two I'm going to pop it in the middle and let's make it perhaps semi bold. And we'll make it a bit bigger. You can slide. I'm going to type in, say, 32. That works absolutely perfectly for me. OK, well, let's save that. Let's just move this on top of the other one as it's a title. Pretend that it's a title for whatever we've got going on there. OK, I'm now going to add a code module. On this right hand column you can add yours wherever you want they don't take up much real estate or you can put this code in the additional css panel i'll show you how to do that in a moment so i'm going to hit the little dark button to add a new module i'm going to use a code module and let's start writing some code as we are using code module i've got to write style tags and that's the only bit i can't put below the video for you to copy style tags are Left pointy brackets, the word style, S-T-Y-L-E, right pointy bracket. When you put in the right one, it'll put the closing bracket in there for you. Let's separate these and we can write the code in between. Now, if you want to put this in your additional CSS panel rather than on your page itself, and that'll work better if you're using this animation over multiple pages, just go down to your dashboard. Once at the dashboard, you can go to appearance or cut and to customize. That will take you to this page here. At the bottom, you'll find the additional CSS. You can put your additional CSS in here rather than a code module if you want to. If you're putting it in the additional CSS panel or the custom CSS panel in the Divi dropdown, you don't need the style tags. So you don't need these style tags if you're writing with the additional CSS panel. Great. Well, let's come up with a class name. I'm going to call this class name perhaps float title. All class names have a dot or period in front of them. So it's a dot. I'm going to say float title. This needs to be unique. You don't want to have any other class names with this title. You can call yours what you want. I like it to make a bit of sense to me. Then we can open close some curly brackets. And in between those curly brackets, we can write what we want it to do. Well, I'm going to write an animation, so I'm going to say animation, colon, and I'm going to give it the name of the animation that we're going to write in a moment. So let's call our animation float, capital T perhaps. Again, you can call it what you want. It's got to be unique. I like it to make sense too. I want it to run for five seconds before it stops. 
But I actually want it to keep going and going and going. So I'm going to say infinite. So it'll keep rolling around. Once it stops, it'll start up again. That's great. Now we actually need to create this animation that we've called float T. So to do that, we're going to use keyframes today. I'm going to say at keyframes. Then the name of the animation, which was float T. Now we can open and close some more curly brackets and put in the animation that we want. So 0% when the page loads. And also at the end, I'm going to have it be exactly where we started. So we'll put in 100%. And if you don't understand what I'm saying here, 0% is when the page loads or second one of our five seconds. 100% is at the last end of second of five. So when it starts and at the end, so let me close some more curly brackets here. I'm going to say transform. And I really want it to be exactly where it is now. We're just going to have it lift in the middle for a little bit. So I'm going to say transform. I'm going to say translate. I'm only going to have it do going up and down. So I'm going to have it going over the Y axis, which is capital Y. I want a zero in there because I don't really want it to move. Then just after that curly bracket, not after the one that's encapsulating the whole thing, just after that one above there, I'm actually going to copy this. I'm going to paste it down below. I'm going to say at 50%, basically two and a half seconds away through. Don't want the comma and I don't want the 100% on there. I'm going to have it lift by 20 pixels. So I'm going to say negative 20 px. And if you want it more, you can make that number bigger, obviously, and less smaller. If you want it to be quicker, make that number smaller. If you want it to be slower, make that number bigger. Great, well, let's make this work. To do that, we need to give our floating title up here, this class name, float title. So let's copy that, control C. We go back into our floating title here. Go over to the advanced CSS ID in classes. Make sure you're in the class, not the ID. We'll paste that class name in there. Note it's without the dot or the period in front. And as you can see, that's now floating up and down, which is fantastic. And as I was saying earlier, if you want to make it quicker, let's go back into the code module here. You can make that perhaps two seconds and it'll bounce up and down every two seconds. That might spin your viewers out a little bit. If you want it less movement, take that down in size. And it's just doing 10 there. That's quite nice, actually. Obviously, if you want it more. But I was happy with my five seconds. And my negative 20 there. That works for me. That's fairly calm, but it's going to get people's attention. And of course, once you've got this class thing, let's copy it again. Remember, without the period, control C to copy, you can add it to anything you want. For instance, we've got a button here. If you wanted to animate that button, go into the button over to the advance. Remember to go into your CSS class, not ID, post it in there. And we've got that little button bouncing. And actually, when we refresh the page, they'll be syncing together. You can do it with a whole module if you want to, by doing exactly the same thing. In fact, let's do it with this little icon. Go in there, over to Advanced, CSS ID and Classes, make sure you're in the class, paste that one in there. i move this out of the way. That little icon's bouncing up and down there too. And like I say, you can do it on rows, you can do it on sections, you can do it to whatever you want once you've created that. I think I animated this row right here before. Just go into the row. Same thing. Advanced. CSS IDs and classes. Yep. There's the old class that I had in there. Let's put the new one in. And it's bouncing that whole row. That's a little too much, obviously. But it's just showing you, you can apply that to anything you want once you've got it. Let's save our changes now, make sure everything is going to work on the front end. And let's exit the Visual Builder. Now we can roll down to our little animations down here. 
there we have it there's our floating title there's the button there's the icon and like i say they're all in sync once you refresh the page if you wanted to have them bouncing at different rates you could just copy that code module give it a new class name and also an animation name i have different timing and apply them to different things i hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to the youtube channel don't forget if you've got any questions pop them below the video i'll do my best to answer them for you or make a demo video once again this has been jamie from system 22 and webdesign and tech tips.com thanks for watching have a great day